coming up on Mountain News this morning. Sickness continues to spread here in Eastern Kentucky, causing local schools to cancel classes. And a college here in Eastern Kentucky makes an effort to make sure ambulances are filled with people who are trained to save lives when the need arises. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. 632 here. It's Tuesday. I'm Dakota Makris. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And well, it's really your last time with me this week because I'm off the rest of the week after today. And I know Brandon, I know you're just real you're just real hurt by it. I am. I know I can I can feel it in your voice, hear That's it in right. your voice that you're just so sad that I won't be here the rest of the week. No, it's laryngitis. <laughs> <laughs> That's true too. That's true too. But, uh, yeah. So no, it, we are sad that you're not gonna be yeah. here this week. Uh, although my voice does sound pretty gravelly mm -hmm. this morning. Anyway, let's talk, uh, talk about your forecast, which is going to be fairly nice after the morning chill today, but we are going to be seeing rain chances just around the horizon. Let's go to London first this morning, I-75, and you'll see down that way, not a whole lot of action right at freezing. So again, frost, fog, and a little bit of both in some areas. I mean, neither in some areas, but again, it's cold out there. 21 Clintwood, 28 Hazard, 29 Prestonsburg, Pikeville, 32 London, 30 in Williamsburg, 27 Jonesville, 25 Irvin, Monticello, 2, 34 in Somerset, and again, 33 in Jackson. Temperatures between about 5 and about 15 degrees colder this morning than they were 24 hours ago. Your frosted weather weeds forecast, your breakfast forecast. If you're heading out to school today, you're going to be seeing, again, some cool temperatures. Make sure you bundle up and give yourself time to get those cars warmed up. A little bit chilly out there this morning. Dakota? All right, Brennan, thank you so much. Well, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recently placed Kentucky at the top of the very high flu transmission category. Several schools across the region have canceled classes in the last few weeks due to illnesses. Our Keaton Hall has more on how you can help keep your kids safe and healthy. An early start to Christmas break for some is a reminder to others of just how bad this flu season is. The numbers are a lot higher than they have been in the last, oh, I'd say five years. Um, and that uh, really has more to do with the fact that we are out more in public. Perry County Schools canceled class for the entire week due to illness. This comes after the CDC recently put Kentucky at the top of the very high category for flu transmission. The hope would be that with kids going out of school, they go home, they get better. The ones who are still sick stay home. But sadly, sometimes that doesn't happen. Pediatrician Dr. Molly O'Rourke works for the primary care centers of Eastern Kentucky, and they help provide the nurses for Perry County Schools. We hear from the schools pretty frequently. We're aware that going out with the numbers, um, it's putting out the, um, the teachers, the staff, as well as the students. Um, and the numbers, once they get to a certain point, it just exposes more children than it helps. Dr. O'Rourke says you should take your child out of school if you think they have the flu and let them rest. The flu is um, thankfully pretty simple. Um, it's keeping everybody hydrated, lots of fluids. Um, if they don't want to eat, it's okay as long as they're drinking. Tylenol and Motrin to cover for fever and discomfort, a lot of rest. And if they have a fever, you should take your child to the doctor within a day or two. In Hazard, Keaton Hall, WYMT Mountain News. Floyd County schools are also closed for the rest of the week due to illness. Uh, these will not be NTI days. And for the latest closings, you can see them at the bottom of your screen. Eastern Kentucky is making a coordinated effort to keep ambulances filled with qualified and trained EMTs in case of an emergency. Well, the cost of training has deterred some folks from pursuing careers as EMTs, but now officials with Pikeville Medical Center have announced a $200,000 grant to offer up EMT training. An athletic director at the University of Pikeville is one of the many people who say the financial burden kept them sidelined and now the grant is making the career possible. That was one thing me and my coworker were both looking at it and we were trying to figure out financially how we could afford it, if we could go through the school, see if they would help us a little bit and we could pay the rest. When I spoke to Mitch over the phone and he said, it was all paid for. I was kind of in shock. I was like, that makes me my decision so much easier to actually go forward and take the class. Well, the training is 400 hours and it taught a couple of nights a week by Pikeville firefighters. Bowling Funeral Home in London will host a community candlelight Christmas service later this week. 
Funeral Director Barkley Bowling says the service is for anyone who struggles with the loss of a loved one during the holidays. There will be an uplifting message, music, and a candle lighting. He says the funeral home wanted to put on the service because of the loss many have dealt with during the past few years. We're trying to focus it around, you know, God's word and God's promises to, to have faith to, to go on, maybe find some joy during the holidays that they wouldn't normally have without their loved one. The candlelight service is this Thursday. Doors open at 6 p.m. Service begins at 7, and again, it'll take place at Bowling Funeral Home in London. Names of loved ones and special memories can be seen on Christmas trees set up by Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Corbin. While the names make each Christmas tree a little more personalized for community members and show unity through triumph, Sacred Heart Secretary Catherine Cullen says the signs, the signs each hold a special meeting. I actually made the signs. We got the idea from the trees in the parish that he saw in New Jersey, and I had them write what they wanted on their sign in memory of, in honor of. Some people wrote poems. Some people just put names. It's just various different things, whatever it meant to them. You can see the trees as you pass Sacred Heart Catholic Church on Master Street in Corbin. The Christmas star that has shined bright over the city of Corbin will not be lit up this holiday season. City officials say vultures damage the star and they will have to replace it with a new one. The star sits on top of a water tower overlooking the city. Officials are hoping to have a new one by next year. Primary care centers of Eastern Kentucky and Hazard is bringing joy to kids across the region. It's Christmas on the Hill event kicked off on Monday. Tammy Hignight with Primary Care says those involved wanted to host a fun event for kids this holiday season. We have a cookie kit that we're going to have. They can decorate their own cookie. We have Whoville, and then we also have a, where they can write letters to Santa, and then we will have Santa here as well, and they can have free pictures with Santa Claus. Well, the event is free for anyone to attend, and if you missed last night, there will be another night of Christmas on the Hill. Fun on Wednesday from 4 to 7 p.m. at Primary Care Center here in Hazard. More than 200 kids in Laurel County will have a better Christmas thanks to the efforts of police this past weekend. On Saturday morning, dozens of police officers and other volunteers made their way to the London Walmart for the 27th annual Shop with a Cop event. Well, the event is funded by donations from area businesses, organizations, churches, and individuals. Each child received $150 to spend, with most of that going toward clothes and $50 going toward toys. The state's oldest and longest serving mayor retired from office in Rockcastle County yesterday. Walter Lee Cash has served as Broadhead's mayor for 24 years and has never missed a board meeting. At a reception last night, he officially retired and the city's new mayor was sworn in. Cash says he's a lifelong member of the Broadhead community because that's just how much the town means to him. And his successor, new mayor Jerry Adams, says he has some big shoes to fill. Well, I grew up in this town. I grew up. I, I spent two years out of it when I was in the Army. And other than that, I, I've lived in Broadhead all my life. It, I can't say enough for Walter, I'll be honest with you. He's been the great thing for 24 years for the city of Broadhead. Helped us every way he could and everything. And, uh, but, I mean, you, people, you can ask people in this town about Walter. They know, I mean, what he's done, helped them and stuff. And for anyone wanting to wish the former mayor any well wishes, he is turning 88 on December 28th. Coming up on 641, a bit of a chilly start to the day out there. There is some frost, there is some fog. Watch out for both. And you, see, you may see neither one of them, but again, just take in mind that we're chilly out there. Back to 22 in Clintwood, 34 in Somerset. That is our range with a lot of upper 20s and low 30s out there this morning. Out the door forecast, I cannot encourage you to get out and enjoy today because it's going to be the last mild day we see for a little bit. It's going to be the last warmer day as temperatures get into the mid 50s. And we're going to see a mix of sun and clouds. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you so much. When we come back here on Mountain News this morning, the FBI releases the statistics for hate crimes here in the U.S. in the past year as it continues the effort to prevent people from becoming victims. Stay with us.